For more on this topic, let's bring in Tammy Bruce and Richard Fowler, both Fox News contributors. Okay, so listen, we know the DOJ can walk and chew gum. They can do multiple investigations. But Richard, you got to admit, the optics of some of the things that they've chosen to expend energy on raise a lot of questions about how they're using their time and resources. <laughs> Sure, it does. But I think in this case of Elon Musk, it, it really does create a, a larger thing at play. Number one, I think what they're arguing, and these are, let, let's be very clear for the audience, these aren't folks who have crossed the border illegally. These are folks who have come into this country, they're a refugee, they might be from Afghanistan, they might be from Ukraine, they've filed for refugee status, they've been approved for refugee status, they are highly qualified in many cases, they're rocket scientists, rocket engineers, they want to work at SpaceX. And what Elon Musk and his executives are saying is, you cannot apply for a job here because we only want to hire hire Americans, even though there might not be an American qualified for this position. But beyond that, what we also see happening in Elon Musk's world is that at, at, at Twitter, or formerly now called X, is there's also a lawsuit pending around racial and sexual discrimination based on the fact that he laid off more women than men. So there seems to be a pattern around Elon Musk that is quite problematic, given, given the fact that the U.S. government relies on him way too much for space travel as well as charging <laughs> stations. So hmm. there's a lot happening here, Shannon, okay. to say the least. <laughs> there is. And as a former labor and employment attorney who dealt with all these discrimination cases and all these kinds of things, they're very messy and they take a lot of time um, and their allegations until proven otherwise. And, you know, we'll see what a jury has to say on that. In the meantime, uh, Tammy, if the GOP of conservatives are going to be about rule of law and there are potential legal violations here, why should Elon get a pass? Well, the rule of law is key. I think what the optics here are very interesting when it comes to the timing with the argument that the federal government is picking and choosing. That, no, they're not looking at uh, the Biden situation as an example. Donald Trump, though, has got, you know, 91 charges against him, indicted four times. And then a, a man, Elon Musk, who also challenges the status quo, did not make a lot of friends on the left when he bought Twitter, which is now <laughs> X. And so you, we see these kinds of targeting uh, approaches from the federal government. And of course, the trust in the federal government at this point, especially the Department of Justice, continues to decline. So I mean, we obviously want everyone to be fair, but we also, when we think about the hiring of Americans, we're dealing with an economy that's difficult. And you know, we're not entirely sure when we're looking at the issue of refugee status that in fact people do just come across the border mm -hmm. and are saying I'm a refugee and then they're released. There's a reason why U.S. Uh, at least residency is required because you've been vetted. This is an argument by the government that that dynamic isn't required. And when you've oh. got uh, 800,000 year to date right now coming across the border, you've got 591 but, but, people Tammy, on the to, terrorist okay, Tammy, watch to, list. To be honest, uh, let me finish. I didn't interrupt you, Richard. But you're, you're mixing when apples you, and oranges no, here. You're, people you're, crossing the border uh, illegally okay. and refugees no, are two okay. different Sorry, categories. Come on, Richard. To be no, fair. No, okay, to be hold fair. on. Hold on. Excuse okay. me. Tammy, finish your answer so we can move Thank on you. to our next topic. Thank you. That That's the issue, is that what the government is viewing as someone who is a refugee in this country with the terrorists that we've caught, the, the criminal aliens that... 10,000 the, the Border Patrol has encountered, but it's only arrested 800. There is a security issue with the rockets and the nature of, of Elon is saying he can't even hire Canadians because of certain hmm. restrictions. So this does have to go to a court. A judge is going to have to determine what's going on. And considering the government's attitude and who they go after, I think they are going to have a, a, a few losses in this regard. Yeah, and, and Tammy, I think some of the concerns you're bringing up are in the context of asylum, which I think is what Richard was trying to get to. So we'll, we'll go on to the next topic because this is going to play out in court probably for years. Okay, it's definitely no secrets that President Biden's age has been a big concern as he campaigns for re-election. That keeps showing up in polling with Republicans, independents, Democrats alike. Well, former advisors now say the Democrats are downplaying their worry over his fitness to hold office and puts forth this possible theory. They talk behind their hand. Nobody wants to get on TV and say it because we all like, you know, like to be able to go to you know, barbecues and house parties. But uh, people are concerned. Uh, and uh, I, I do think that um, uh, anybody but Trump going up against someone like Biden, uh, given some of his, his, uh, his challenges recently, uh, probably uh, might have a good shot and could make that age an issue. This is going to be a tricky one. Uh, Tammy, we'll start with you on this because the polling does show across the board there is concern about this issue. But, you know, uh, President Biden has embraced this. He's running. He's the incumbent. I mean, Democrats can't exactly say, like, no, Mr. President, we've decided you're not running. Well, you know, it's interesting. They had their basement campaign because they felt, apparently, that it was too dangerous to have him 
even that many years ago in front, he himself said to placate people's worries that he would be a one-term president. So when you're looking at what there was an acknowledgement of to just get Trump out at the time, it was Joe Biden. And there was this presumption that, you know, he wouldn't continue. And then that means, of course, if, as Nikki Haley is asserting, that they know it's going to be, in fact, a handover to Kamala Harris, who could not win on her own, but allows the same group of people handling, handling Joe Biden to continue handling the White House and then they can, of course, claim the first woman president. I would prefer a woman president who uh, knows what she's doing, will be competent, and that uh, will help this country get back on her feet. Uh, and that is certainly not the vice president at this point. Well, her numbers, as you know, Richard, are lower than the president when it comes to approval. Um, and that, you know, even with the Democrats, they have real concerns about her. Um, but what about the, you know what will be part of these debates is that Republicans will say a vote for President Biden is potentially a vote for a President Harris. Uh, look, I'm not sure about the, you know, the house parties and the barbecues. Uh, I have my own at my house, so there's that. <laughs> invite <But> us. <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> you're always, you're, you're, <laughs> Shammy, Shannon, you're always invited. Uh, but look, I, I, I think this. I think there are some Democrats out there, and I think there are some folks who voted for the president in the last election that are indeed concerned about age, and they're indeed concerned that many of the things that the president promised when he ran the first time have not been delivered on. I think as we get into this campaign swing, what the president's going to have to do, because whether you are... Donald Trump or whether you're former President Barack Obama, both of them would have loved to have the bipartisan wins that Joe mm. Biden had. So now Joe okay. Biden can have to go out and sell that to the American people, yeah, and that's going to be on him. We got to like leave inflation. it there because that is how this happens. You get out <laughs> the there and campaign. Costs. I will see you all at the barbecue, the house party, whatever it is this weekend. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.